assured how pleased I am. She's taken up painting. You must encourage this, Liz. You must keep her at the easel. Promise me you'll never allow her to stop painting. Well, it's improved your mood, I must say. Uh, is she not in the play? No, she's damn well not in the play. Over my dead body. Sure, she'll hear you. She never listens. She only ever hears Hyacinth. I want this play to be memorable. I want even the smallest parts to shine. I know it's not an enormous role, but I want our audience to see an elegant, graceful Lady Malvern. Elegant? Graceful person required to play a titled lady? Now, who does that remind you of? I have to tell you, Hyacinth. And I must tell you that you must not look at me for the part, though made in heaven you might think it would be. Oh, I hate to disappoint you, Emmett, but you really must not ask. I won't. I, I, I won't ask. Tell her, Liz. She can have any writing. Oh, I really shouldn't. I have so many other commitments. I agree. You shouldn't. Uh, tell her, Liz. Oh, no, we understand, Hyacinth. I mean, don't, don't, don't feel like you have to oblige us. Then there's your painting. But then again, I ought not to be selfish and think only of my own needs. Yes, you should. Of course you should. It's an artist's duty to be selfish. How many glittering gowns would Lady Malvern wear? I could do gowns. Of course, she needs something uh, chic and a little bit simpler for, for wearing around the house. What do you think, Mr. Nelson? You think she should be selfish? There's no point in asking me, but it's not refused. I get things wrong. Marriage, for instance. Oh, poor Mr. Nelson. If I was to join the cast, you'd have someone you could lean on. We have Liz for leaning on. Uh, story of my life. <laughs> Look at Ebbett. He's so distraught. He's so disappointed at my not being available. How can I treat him like that? You can. You can treat him like that. Tell her, Liz. Of course I'll do it. I'll be your elegant Lady Malvern. No, no, I want no thanks. Although I would expect to give my input with regard to her wardrobe. Uh, you'd hate the part, Hyacinth, and you have to play another part as well. It's a lot of hard work and very time consuming. Oh, he worries about me so. Worry not, Emmett. All your problems have been solved. I look forward to working with you, Mr. Milson, and I'm so glad that you found your way to the right sort already. Oh, and I promise you, Emmett, that I'll be a Lady Mulford you'll remember. <laughs> There's no business like charming business.
Here's our lady Malvern. Uh, I have said uh, you know Millie. Yes. Hello, Mr. Milton. Very good. Uh, yes, thank you, Mrs. Bucket. A bouquet, dear. Oh, I'm sorry. I thought it was spelled. Yes, but we like to use the original French pronunciation. Oh, I see. My husband's forebears were rather top drawer on the continent, although we make little mention of it. Uh, yes, take a look at this, uh, Millie. I shall be playing opposite you here. We have most of the scene together. That's you? Yes. A good deal of the plot turns on this scene. It's a bit talky, but it's something we need to get right. Go away! Go away! You can't come in! We're rehearsing! What the hell is she doing now? <laughs> Do forgive me for for us being so rudely interrupted. You might as well know, Mr. Milson, that I am loosely related to these people, the half-naked one only by marriage. Oh, let them in, Hyacinth. They're in the play. Huh. In the play? Yes, yes. I, I, I've been trying to tell you. In this play? Yes. Without a shirt or tie? On the night, I promise you, Onslow will be wearing a shirt and tie. Oh, there's always a snag. Why have you followed me into this play, Daisy? Oh. Nobody followed you. We were here first. Oh, we do the play every year. They're my reliables. I don't know what I'd do without them. Did you know they were in this play? Yeah, yes, and for you, I assumed you knew. Are they any good? They're very good. Well, yes, I can see it now. Emmett wants characters from all walks of life. Us Mulvins may be poorer, but we're proud. You hate me now, don't you? Oh, nonsense. As if I'd mind. I mean, I can't grumble. I've been given two parts. And here they are. Oh. I've marked your pages. You'll be playing Lady Mulvern, and you have two scenes as the cook. The cook? You'll enjoy it. It's quite a contrast from the quiet elegance of Lady Malvern to this odd, lumpy creature with absolutely no style whatsoever. But I don't do no style whatsoever. You'll enjoy it. It's a delicious part. Um, you have some good lines. It's a bit of comic relief. <laughs> Never in all my life have I ever seen myself as comic relief. Wait, I have an idea. Instead of me being just the cook, couldn't I be a high-born Russian lady fleeing the revolution and forced to hide her true identity until the last act? No, Hyacinth. She's a cook. She's not from Russia. She comes from Luton. Oh, I don't think I could ever be convincing as someone coming from Luton. Oh. No. Um, uh, well, why don't we have a little read? And Unless, of course, you'd rather wig out. Yes, I would. I would rather wig out. Mm -hmm. I know, I know, but um, let, let's read. <laughs> yes. Now, can we please move on? Rose! I know it's unprofessional. Sorry I'm late. It's taken me 15 minutes to disengage from Mr. Wilkinson. He gets so emotional. You'd never believe he had his own business. Oh, are you in this thing too? I wouldn't miss it. You get to wear such lovely clothes. And he's a dish. And who's this the shy smile? Oh, the wonders <laughs> really. Come away, Rose. Mr. Milson's hardly recovered from a bad divorce. Oh, there's a cure for that. Welcome back to playtime, Mr. Milson. Help is at hand. People tend to call me really sick. Oh, so take care of that. Hey, Rose, we're supposed to be rehearsing. It's been a while since she needed any rehearsing. You go with what you got. So who's looking after Daddy? I mean, there's no wonder he's running around loose. No, he was all right when we left him. He'd look oh, through oh, some old postcards. Oh, don't mention the postcards. Oh. Has anyone got a brush? I've got bits of Mr. Wilkinson all over. He just come off so. I'd like to begin now, please. If we'll all be seated, we'll try our first read through. Right, you all know the setting. An old English country house in the early 30s, the home of Lord and Lady Malvern. It's uh, summertime and the household is, in, is preoccupied 
with uh, preparations for the uh, party at which will be uh, announced the engagement of their son Tristan to uh, Miss Cressida Swan, the actress. That's you, Rose. Oh, I like it already. <laughs> but that makes me old enough to be Rose's mother. Yes. Well, couldn't Tristan be a, a nephew? I mean, one we all love, of course, but not all that different in age. I think we'll follow the play, Hyacinth. Merely a suggestion. <laughs> 